welcome to the Coach's Corner. Second episode, uh, we got a lot of good feedback from last week's episode, so let's hope that this one's a little bit better. <laughs> what? <laughs> we got good feedback. It was, it was great feedback. Um, all right, so, uh, uh, should we do the rounds again? I'm Ash. <laughs> Not saying my surname again. <laughs> Luke. Luke. I'm Blanka. Just Blanka. Just Blanka. I'm Abby. Abby Ray. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Steve. Steve, though. It was so deep when you were last time. So masculine. Alright, so um, yeah, and like I said last episode, is that everyone's been messaging us through the Squat Club Instagram page and shooting up their questions, and then we put them, collect them together, and put them into answers on this fine video here. So, <clears throat> should we get into the first question? Yes. Uh, so, number one, hi coaches, can you lose body fat and gain muscle, or at least retain muscle at the same time? You know what, I wish, I wish I could lose body fat and build muscle at the same time. That would be awesome. It would be awesome. It can, it can happen. Yeah. Um, not in, okay. okay. No, the, the, Let's go through, I guess, the, the stages where yeah. it can happen. I guess that, like, as I was asking that, typically they're already kind of leaner and are trying to get that balance where, you know, they are trying to build, build muscle and lose fat at the same time. Mm. In that case, it's probably a bit more difficult because yes. you are going to be probably in a surplus to build muscle. So yeah. It might be like slightly harder, but I guess if someone's um, not, you know, as advanced or kind of starting out, then they will do this body fat and building muscle. So, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's a, like, that's that's there is an optimal way to do it. So obviously being in a calorie surplus, like muscle protein synthesis and like hormonal and stuff, you need to be in a surplus to build muscle. That's the most optimum way. Um, can you do both at the same time? I think you can, but it depends on a lot of factors. Beginner, that was, like if you're a beginner, yeah. you can probably do that. Yeah. If um, you're genetically gifted, then yes, you can probably do that as well. Um, even, I think, if you're, you've got body weight to lose, like body fat to actually lose, you can use that as an energy source to still build muscle. So that's where some people do it. Um, but it's probably not an optimal way. Like the optimal way is to be in a surplus. And you could probably just break it up into phases. So yeah. have a phase where you're obviously building muscle and then cycle it to losing body fat. And then you structure your um, fat loss and building phases like that rather than just trying to do it at once. It's not optimal. Also, I think it's to do with the training age. That's a big thing too, training age. So the yeah. newer someone is into training, especially in the strength training, we've found that, uh, and the studies out there as well, that you will build muscle and because you're you've got energy output too, you will be burning body fat um, the newer you are into training, but then as more advanced into it, that dramatically slows down a lot, a lot. So that's why I said like, I wish that, I wish that could happen to me. <laughs> yeah, so if you, the more like volume you've, been, like you've done in your training age, it's gonna be a lot harder to do that, definitely. Mm, cool, all right, number two. So, uh, D coaches, how often should I be changing my macros so that I can keep seeing progress in leaning out and losing body fat? Um, well, you don't need to change your macros um, that often. It obviously depends on how consistent you are. Um, if you are hitting your macros, um, you're consistent and you start seeing that your progress is not as fast as you would like to, it to be, then yeah, you can really change your macros. But if you're still progressing, if, whatever your goal is, um, if you're not laying out, so you're losing body fat, you don't need to change the macros. You just continue doing whatever you're doing. Like, it doesn't need to be changed every fortnight or every week. Sometimes I've been on the same macros right now for last six weeks and I'm still losing body fat. I just totally missed. Edit that out. <laughs> you know what you're supposed to do? Someone told me that if you miss high five, you have to look at their elbow. If you look at the elbow, then you'll get it. No, that's really? like yeah. when, next time. So when you go to shake someone's hand, you always yeah, look at the elbow. Yeah, but you guys line that up quite well. <laughs> right, hand <Yeah>. shake. <laughs> that's what that's all the <laughs> shake. When you look at the elbow, you get the elbow. Imagine going for an interview, you're like, I. <laughs> like, oh, this guy can't be shaking hand. Um, what's the question? I don't know. I think um, Lenka said, like, if you think you're not seeing results, it's important not to look like, oh, I'm losing, but I'm losing quick enough. I'm just going to drop my calories. And then 
the heart, like the hardest thing, you can lose body fat, but it's probably retaining it. So if you just like, oh, keep dropping them, and keep dropping them, you're gonna like come to a point, okay, you've lost, but you're probably not gonna retain it. Yeah. You just drop too drastically. Yeah. Um, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, like it's the main thing is you wanna retain your new weight. If you're just going from like 1800 calories to 1700 down to like 13 within the space of a month, then you're not gonna retain yeah. your weight at all. Um, and you just gotta adjust accordingly. If you are on a set macros and you are losing body fat, then that's fine, keep it at that. Um, but you don't have to always just drastically change. Like, keep it consistent. Mm -hmm. If you do find it does store, maybe adjust them like slightly, but you want to keep it. Yeah. I would consistent. also look at other factors too, like if you're tracking, like, you know, the accuracy in the tracking. Yeah, exactly. So measuring your food, weighing your food, like meats and mm -hmm. like portion sizes as well, because there could be some variance in that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, are you how consistently are you yeah. doing it? Yeah. Being accurate. Yeah. The consistency yeah. is the most important. Like yeah. then. You don't need to change macros mm. that often. Mm. You just really need to be consistent. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I found that, I guess, in, in my experience as well, that um, more, the more people that don't aren't getting results as what they would like to, it's it's more of a compliance issue. So looking at trying to tidy up, tighten things up, um, certain macros, then they start reducing their body fat. Then, but uh, I guess over a few weeks, if they're not getting um, if everything's starting to slow down and their compliance is on track, they're getting their training, they're eating their, if you've prescribed them cardio as well, um, that's when you're looking, trying to make some small adjustment, but they need to fix something that's not broken. Mm. All right, next question. How do you stop your mentality from affecting your training? At the moment, I'm having trouble with my squats because mentally I'm just worried about my form and failure. How do you get past that? Where's Michael with me? <laughs> <laughs> Michael and Cena, are we told him? Yeah. <laughs> Well, firstly, I'd just like to give a shout out to Ebony. <laughs> as requested. <laughs> as requested, I know this is your question, so I knew I I'd give you a shout out, so. I think um, in these cases, you should probably start with breathing because that's important. It will take your thoughts somewhere else. So you won't think about will the actual... We still, we still use the gym. <laughs> <laughs> you, won't, you won't think about the actual sport anymore and about like, how you're going to do it. But you'll focus on the breathing. Yeah. yeah. Instead of yeah, thinking about oh I'm gonna fail, I'm gonna fail. So I think that's the first thing, mm -hmm. first step. Um, yeah. I think if you've done the training leading up to it, having confidence in your ability, like you've been leading up to a certain point and you know that you've done what you need to do to get yourself there, it's that confidence in, in doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, the doubting practice, yourself. Yeah. yeah. All, like all the training you've done leading up to it, all that mm -hmm. practice is, you know, you, you know, it will mm -hmm. lead you to making that lift then. And make with every single lift even from your warm-ups, you should approach that as if it's like a really heavy weight and you approach your heavy weights as if it's lightweight. So that way your mentality is right and then that's just going with all your technique and your strength that you've built up over the time. So. Mm -hmm. And I would say like going back like with the breathing, like when you breathe, like make sure that you've got everything locked in and everything tight and activated so you know that you've got your best chance of making that lift if it's you're the one that you're going for or whatnot. I always tell my clients to um, just focus on the process, not so much the weight. Just like if you know you can get set, get in a good position, um, just focus on the, what you're actually doing and not really worry too much about the weight. I th you can I can't, but I think that that's ability. actually what she's doing. That's why she is. Okay. Uh, well, because so that's it's, what she said that she's focusing too much on the technique. Okay. Well, in that case, if because it's mental, then it could do to do with arousal. So, are you over or under aroused? Um, Inverted U hypothesis. <laughs> where, are we where are we going with this? <laughs> this is taking uh, sure. If you want to search it, or Ebony, if you want to search it, it's called the inverted U hypothesis and it is arousal. <laughs> it's not what you're thinking. So yeah, if you guys can search it, that would be good. But it's just like you want to be an optimal arousal. You just want to just come in and just like you have a heavy squat and you're just like not feeling it and it's down. You just want to find that balance. Like I was saying to Lanka, everyone's different. Everyone's going to have optimum, optimal level of arousal. Like some people go up and you'll see them get like pumped up. They'll grab the bar, they'll slam it on their back. That's work. That works for them. I think you've got to find what works well for you. So find your arousal. If you just like, some people go up to the bar and they'll be super chilled out. They could be lifting heavy weight and you won't even know they're lifting heavy weight. But you just got to find that optimum um, level of arousal. Okay, cool. Uh, hi guys, I have a question for the coaches corner. I've heard uh, I've heard of fasting as a dieting technique. Do you recommend this? And if so, how can I implement it? Intermediate fasting, it's built some popularity, so people just think you can kind of jump on it. But what it is, 
it's just a period where you don't eat. So just say you wake up, you fast till just say 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, whatever, and then you eat all your calories in a space of like eight hours, for example. So it's calorie time, calorie restriction, that's what it is. Um, and this would be a good plug for last week's episode on intimate fasting, just here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to put any references, but that's what it is. So you restrict your foods for certain parts of the day and then you eat all your calories. Um, is it better than other diets? Well, that depends on you. So the best diet is something that you can adhere to. And for some people, it will work and it can work. Um, for other people, it's probably not going to work. For myself, it's not going to work because I get up at five o'clock, I'm hungry, I want to eat, I want to space my calories at the end of the day. Um, for other people, they're fine with that, they'll just eat all their calories at once. Um, and you've got to look at it like, can you stick to this diet long term? Can you wake up and not eat for an extended period of time, eat all your calories at once, go to sleep? Can you do that long term? I don't know, that's I think it comes you. down to individual, because you know, that's something that I can implement and I, was, I, was, I found that, that suited my lifestyle, you know, fasting, definitely. Yeah. There's a lot of people that do it mm. and they're like, they're like, oh, this is the holy grail of fat loss. Well, no. there's no studies that actually show intermediate fasting is better mm. than any other diets. If, well, there is, but they didn't control calories, so it's a bit flawed in that aspect. So. It's another tool that could be used. Yeah, it's just, it is, it's just like, a tool. And then, I think it can be useful on weekends, but I think we discussed that last week, didn't mm. we, about mm. you know, potentially stay on a Sunday if you've had a big night. And we didn't discuss that, did we? No, we didn't. No. Well, we I don't think big guys are going out partying. What coach just called that? What coach just called that? You've been on. I've been on another coach. Alright, I've got a confession. Uh, Whose coach is going to have been going to? We didn't talk Abby. about that last week. Abby's going out. Abby. I didn't mean big night as in going out on a big night. What did you mean? What did you mean? You tell us what you mean, Abby. What do you mean? <laughs> Why are you going red, Abby? <laughs> What's wrong? We're just zooming in the space. You got red. <laughs> I, don't, I just get red sometimes, okay? <laughs> For no particular reason. <laughs> no, Save his nose space. Alright, so, let me breathe first. <laughs> no, I mean, like, if you have a big night, say, going out and eating, if you're going out with friends or whatever else, and then the next morning you could, say, skip breakfast and wait till after lunch. You're yeah. not hungry and use that as a bit of a tool yeah. to cut calories. The only way you're going to know is if you try it. Yeah. yeah. I think in your case, Ash, I think because you were working till late, so you, know, yeah. you needed to push that window when you're eating to match you know, when you uh, finish eating. That's right. That's yeah. So it works for you. Yeah. Like, it doesn't work for work. And I guess if you get the bigger picture too, you just kind of got to reach that finish line and you can do it with two meals, three meals, four, five meals, you know. In the, the day, you got to get to that finish line, which is that being in that calorie deficit. It could be good, like for your digestive system, to have a break too. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so there is another side of it yeah. as well, yeah. um, mm. healing of the stomach, which correlates back to a lot of nutrient absorption. So. But it's remember, it's always down to your lifestyle yeah. as well. Yes, yeah. it's not if it's it doesn't work or it works. You know, all, di all diets will work, providing you're in a calorie deficit. It's just yeah. what works best for your lifestyle that you can sustain. And making sure that you're getting in enough food when you are eating, mm, if you are yeah. using it, because that can be a big factor if people yeah. are fasting and, and the right they're not nutrients, actually eating yeah. enough because they think not eating is the way to go, but yeah. that's not what it's about. No. Yeah. That's not about not eating. Correct. Yeah, that whole perception of yeah. it. People think, oh, I just won't eat. Yeah. So yourself, I won't eat, and then good. I won't eat it a little bit, so that's yeah. a better thing than actually going, well, hang on, nah. it's just about not eating for a period but getting in enough food. Mm. So I think you're making sure that you're not doing it for those reasons to under eat. Yeah. Mm. If you are going to do it, I think very important thing is that because the uh, window is restricted that you do get your micronutrients in so oh, yeah, exactly. people think oh it's I'm eating less amount of time I'm going to lose weight anyway and so when they do eat it's just in their mind it's just the less food is fine but because there is less food it's probably even more important that you do get your micronutrients in so yeah. mm -hmm. if you're going to try it like that's a big thing to consider health is important really like that. it is it's awesome Fruits and veggies. All right, let's move on because we're going to keep going around in circles here. Uh, okay, so the fifth question. I eat bad every weekend, but I eat really good on the weekdays. Is this okay? Fridays and Saturdays automatically mean fast food for me. Is this bad? Uh, also, will I get a shout out? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you'll get a shout so, out. So, Bryony Eden, this is your shout out. <laughs> shout out, Bryony. If you're trying. Well, fast foods are bad. <laughs> you can look That's at it. it. Look at it from a few ways. Cool yeah, there are, there are a few different, there are different answers to this question. Fast food, no um, 
like actual nutrients in it. Like yeah. you, there's yeah. no health benefits yeah. of eating fast food. Even if you're eating good in the week, you're still like still not good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you're trying to lose body fat, then still not good because you need to be consistent. Yeah. So if you only eat well for five days, but then you get crazy and you eat bad food two days, there is no consistency in it. Mm. So you're never gonna get the results. Well, there's consistency you in it because they're doing it every yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's consistent nah. eating nothing. Hey, there is consistency in this question. Yeah. yeah. She's consistent. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> Well, if you're trying to eat well and then you're overeating and you're eating bad food on the weekend, that can stop your results through the week. That's so right. Um, I, I think it's almost like where we said last week, where if, if the goal per day was 2,000 calories a day you would need to eat to lose body fat, that means then you had 14,000 calories at the end of the week as your finish line. Um, if you were dieting down and you, you know, you're for the, for, the two, for the five days, that's 2,000 calories times five, that's 10,000 calories already from Monday to Friday. You have Saturday and Sunday, 4,000 calories left. You could splurge on all on Saturday on, on fast food as an example, and then you know, you've already hit your weekly target, and it's Saturday you've still got Sunday to go. So that's when you go into, you know, you're, not in, a, well, you're not in a deficit anymore. You destroy so. your deficit just from the weekend. Yeah. Mm. I guess you could also think too, like, yeah, from that perspective, and then mm. from a health perspective And there's health, too, exactly, yeah, that's yeah, why. Yeah, why are you eating, and how do you feel after you eat? Mm. Like, do you feel good? And, um, Generally, after those two days, Mondays, people hate Mondays because they struggle, because they feel horrible, they're sluggish, energy's low, might come in and training's not as good, mm. because you've had a big weekend and you haven't eaten you know, good food and looked after yourself. Yeah. So I think it's about finding that balance. That's right, um, it is. Mm. And it's not to say don't do it, but maybe once or twice, not the whole weekend. And yeah. all, good, all things are good in moderation. Yeah. Cool. All right, let's wrap it up. Uh, that's it for today's episode. If you guys have any more questions, then shoot them through to our Instagram page at Squat Club AU, and uh, we'll address that next week. So thanks, guys. Thank you. See you next week. Thank you. Bye.